In this video, I would like to help you get organized with files and folders on Windows 11. Now, to get started, you're going to want to open the File Explorer, which is this yellow icon down here. It looks like a file folder. If you hover over it, it says File Explorer. Normally, I would just click on that. It would come up. But in case you don't have that there, I'll show you another way to get to it. You're going to go and right click on your Start button and then click on File Explorer. Now when you're told to right click on something, usually in almost every case, you're going to do the initial right click that brings up that menu and then from that point forward it's left click, left click, left click, just like normal. Right? A lot of people get confused about that, that's why I'm pointing it out. So now we've opened up the File Explorer and you'll see here under folders you've got your desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures and videos. Those are the standard folders where your user content is expected to go. If you're working with a photo editing software, it's going to tend to want to save your photos under pictures, right? Or if you download pictures from your camera, that's generally going to be the default place that it goes, right? If you're working with Word or Excel documents, you're going to typically find them under documents. You can always save to other places with these uh, bits of software, right? But in general, their default is going to kind of correlate with, you know, the category folders here. So, and one folder that people particularly need to know about is this downloads folder. I've had many people, you know, customers who aren't very uh, technical, of course, they'll go onto a website and they'll download a PDF or something that they need but they just have no idea where it's gone. So they don't understand that it's almost certainly just snuck itself into this downloads folder. So I'll go in and help them later and I'll find that they've got five, 10, 15, maybe more copies of that file because they keep trying and trying and they either give up at some point or with some luck, you know, at, at the 17th try or whatever, they finally open the file and, and get to view it. But they may not even realize that they've got another 16 copies or whatever, right? So um, keep that in mind that here are, generally speaking, all the downloads that you pull in from your browser, okay? So another thing I wanna point out is that you're gonna see different downloads, right? There's downloads here, you got downloads there, you got downloads there. That does not mean that there are there's three copies of your downloads. These are just shortcuts to your downloads folder. And similarly, you'll see here for documents, you know, documents, documents. Now the actual document folder is typically drive C, which is generally your system drive, then under users, and then your username, in this case, owner is the username on this PC. So we go there and then here is your documents folder. That's the actual folder. Everything else is simply a shortcut to that folder, right? So if we go back here to that initial list, so these are shortcuts under quick access. Those are shortcuts, right? The real folder is down in there. Now, what happens when you download a folder like, uh, or a file, I should say, like a zip file? Like this here is a copy of WordPress, which is a website thingy and it has a whole bunch of files inside of it, but how do we get them out? Now, all you need to do is right click. Oop, I didn't hit the file properly. Right click and then choose extract all. Okay, when we click on that, it asks us, you know, where we would, we would like to extract the files. By default, what it's going to do is create a folder of the same name of the file in the folder that the file is, right? So here's the folders, downloads, the file is WordPress dash 6.2, etc. So here the folder it's going to create is in the downloads folder and it of the same name. So let's go ahead and click on extract and we'll see it run through its little paces here. Nope, this might take a second or two.
Okay, so I paused the video there, or the recording. Uh, now the extraction is complete and what it has done is opened up the actual folder and we see within that new folder we've got this WordPress folder which we'll explore in a moment. But I'm going to close this window and go back to this original window here and I'm going to show you a couple of details here. So uh, the first thing to notice is that we're in uh, what we would call a detail view, right? So and you can get to all your views here if you click on the little arrow next to view here, we've got different views, like we've got the extra large icons view, right? And then the large icons view, and then there's a medium icons view, and then small icons view, right? Here's a simple list, right? It just lists the files, but there's no details, right? And then here's the one that I tend to like, which is the details view. You get the name, the date, the type, and the size, right? Now, sometimes you can't see the whole name, right? Like here under type, you can, you can part of it is hidden, right? So if you, if you right click on any of these names here and say size all columns to fit, then everything will fit and you'll be able to read all the names and all the descriptions, etc. right? Now, another nice trick is to know that if you click on any of these, you can sort by name, by date modified, by type, and by size. Now, there's not a lot of movement here because there's only a few files, right? But, um, you know, it can be very useful if you're looking for the latest file that you put into a folder to sort by date modified. And if you don't see it come to the top, it might be at the bottom, just click date modified again and it'll reverse that order right and and you may see what you're looking for now um, one of the things you can also do is go in between these headings and click and drag when you see that special little left right cursor you can give yourself a little bit more or less room depending on what you would like now note that this zipped folder has a little zipper on the folder right but it's still hard to tell that's pretty subtle you know, which one, which one's the folder that we extracted and which one's the original file. Now, a way that we can make that a lot simpler, you know, other than checking here under type that says compress zip folder and this says file folder, is to go into uh, oh, this little menu here on the, at the top right, the three dots, and we're going to click on options. Okay. And then click on the view tab right there. And then right here where it says hide extensions for known file types, we're going to uncheck that, all right? And then click OK. And then we'll see that the dot zip shows up. That was hidden before, right? So I find it useful to always see this is a dot zip. Now we can see this is a dot PDF, right? Because without the dot PDF, we just have the um, Google Chrome symbol there. That could have just been an internet shortcut. It's hard to tell, right? Like even here, it doesn't tell us specifically that this is a PDF. But a PDF is something that you could also open in, say, the free Adobe Acrobat, you know, PDF viewer, right? Uh, Acrobat reader, they call it. So it's very useful to turn that option off. You know, do not hide, right? Uh, known file extensions. And it just keeps you better informed, all right? So now let's look into here, into that expanded extracted folder we have this wordpress folder here and uh you know it's not important what these files are but what what i want to show you here is how to manipulate files right so say you wanted to delete a whole group of files and they were all together here so say the all these ones that start with wp dash right this one doesn't here but this whole group of them does so if you click on the first file and then go down and then hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click on the last file, all those files will be selected, right? And then you can either hit the little trash can here or you can, whoops, I just undid my one moment here, or you can right click and we got our trash can here, or we can, you know, compress to a zip file if we wanted to just zip those files up. You know, there's other options here.
delete, rename. A bulk rename is interesting. If you click on rename and you just put in a new name, say, you know, new dash name, right? And then hit enter. It's going to give them all that name, but numbered, right? Because there's so many files, it just puts a, a number beside each of the file names. Now, if you do something like that accidentally and you want to undo it, just go hold down control and tap the Z on your computer. And that's like the undo command, the uh, typical undo command for most programs in Windows. If you can undo a, an action, it's with the control Z uh, keystroke there, right? So now what if you wanted, you know, that whole list there? Let's make that again. But there was one file in the middle that you wanted to keep, right? So now you can hold down the control key instead of the shift key and click on that file. And that's a toggle, right? So if it was selected, it will unselect it. If it's not selected, it will select it. So similarly then, this one isn't part of the group, but we may want to make it a part of the group. We can control click on that. And then again, that could be, they could all be deleted or they could be moved or copied. So let me show you how to copy this whole group of files, right? So again, we can go up here and we have cut copy, right? So here's our copy command. I can just click on that, right? And then say I can go to my desktop, which is now empty, but you see how paste here at the top is highlighted. I can click on paste and then we have all of those files now on our desktop. But if we go back to the original folder, they're still there because we copied them, right? Now, if we want to move them from the desktop, this group here, so an another trick, if you, if you want every file, you don't need to select portions, but you want everything, you can go you know, click on any one file and then go control A, A for all, and that will select all the files in that folder and all the folders that are in that folder if they're subfolders, right? Now let's go up here and we'll say cut, right? So instead of copying, we're cutting. So we're going to take them away and let's say we're going to put them, uh, we'll go here and let's make a new folder. So we will right click here in this thumbnails area. We'll say new folder, we'll say test, right? And then if we double click on that folder to go into it, and then we can paste, right? So we've copied them, now we've pasted them. So if we go to the desktop where they were, that's now empty again, all right? So it's quite easy to copy groups of files and cut groups of files and paste them elsewhere. It's basically just moving them, right? So in that way of selecting multiple files, you know, with the shift key to go from the first one to the last one to get a whole group of things and the control click to kind of toggle certain ones makes uh, handling a large number of files very easy at times, right? And keep in mind that this kind of behavior, or these kind of uh, strategies work, not just with files that you have on your system like this, but with emails and stuff too, right? So if you're in say Microsoft Outlook and you've got a whole bunch of emails in your inbox, um, you know, you can shift select a whole bunch of them, right? And get a whole group of 50 and then delete those or move them into another folder, you know, that kind of thing. So, so almost any visible list in Windows that you can work with, your, your shift and control keys will help you do those kind of advanced selections, all right? So another thing to keep in mind is that if you don't know what a file is for on your system, you know, for example, if we go into uh, drive C here and we have like perf logs, right? Well, we don't currently have permission to access this folder. We can hit continue and get permission. Well, there's nothing in there anyway. Okay, let's give a different example. We're gonna go into Windows and we've got all these folders under Windows. So this is where the files for your operating system reside, right? 
if you go in here and just start removing folders to save room on your computer, you're gonna do damage to your computer, right? So if you don't understand what a folder or a file is for, it's best to leave it alone, right? I have had, you know, many clients make the mistake of cleaning a little too aggressively and then they can no longer start their computer and, and you know, they have to call for help and get things rebuilt, right? So that's one thing. Now, another thing is if we close all of this off, when you're clicking on your start menu, right, you're going to have links to most of the applications that are common on your system. And you see the two little dots here, you know, so we're in the first little group. If we click here, we get down to the second little group. There's another link to our file explorer. But the, the important thing I want to show you here is that if you click on all apps, you'll see every a uh, bit of software, generally speaking, that is installed on your system. And if you right click on those icons and go into the more, right, you can uh, pin those icons to your taskbar, or you can say run as administrator with uh, more permissions, right? Sometimes whatever you're running needs more permissions to do what it is that you need it to do, right? And then you can also jump into app settings, etc., and see, uh, you know, what you can tweak if it's not behaving in the manner that you expect, right? So all of the software and apps on your computer are files, right? Just like the other files, but they're special files that you can execute, right? That you, they can run on your system, you know, use memory, do actions, etc. So, uh, you know, you want to be able to uh, control and manage those as well. Now, if we go back in here and run File Explorer from this area, there's another thing I would like to show you, which is going back to these three little dots into the advanced menu here and going in, into options, back into the view tab. If we scroll all the way down, we have this option expand to open folder. Okay. I want you to go in there and check off that option and then click OK. And what that's going to do is synchronize the left side a file explorer with the right side. So to show you what that means, if I double click here on downloads, right, then it will highlight downloads here on the other side, right? And if I go into this WordPress folder, you'll see that that will now open up over here on the left hand side, right? So you can always see where you are on the left once that option is selected, right? And the reason that can be very useful is that say if we're if we're here and we're going through, we're going to jump into WordPress and we've got all these extra folders and we don't want to keep double clicking, double clicking and exploring that way. We might want to just check out the whole folder structure. So this little arrow here next to WordPress, if we click on that, it will expand that folder and show us all the folders beneath it, right? And then without actually going into the folders, we can keep expanding the structure here, right? So we can say, oh, there's under WP admin, there's all these folders here. And if, you know, we're finished looking at that, we can click on that arrow next to WP admin and collapse that. You know, if we click here, we see, oh, there's these subfolders under WP, WP content, right? But the whole synchronization thing kind of gets you to that area where you can start to do that conveniently, right? Then as soon as you click on a folder on the left, right, that will change the view on the right and you'll see the one that you've selected, right? But you can keep expanding without selecting and find exactly where you need to be, right? If I needed to be in this JavaScript folder here, I could expand, expand, expand and find that and then there I am, right? So working with your folders there on the left hand side, being able to expand and contract them and having them synchronized with what you're looking at on the right hand side 
that can be very useful. And of course, one of the most important skills that you need to have is the ability to make your own folders, right? So if we click on documents here, which is an area where many people will need to make new folders, right? And we click on the right hand side anywhere in the white space here so that we're, we have this panel selected, right? We can, we can right click, say new folder, and then say the dreaded taxes, right? We can make a taxes folder, right? And in the taxes folder, we can double click there, right click, say new folder and then you know make a folder for each year right so then we can right click new folder and then you know 2024 right and then say for example if you know this was an important folder or file i should say uh for taxes for 2024 i could right click on that and choose copy or cut right let's we'll choose copy in this in this case and I could expand taxes here and I could click on 2024 and I could right click and I could paste and there it is right and then even if we say go back into here and if we're gonna right click here so if we copy that I don't even have to open the folder say if I want to put this into 2023 I can right click on 2023 and choose paste, right? And it it's there, if I click on it, it's there, but I don't need to jump into that folder to actually paste, right? So say if I had a folder open where I had just a whole bunch of tax files from you know a seven year period, right? And I was just trying to organize them, I could have my taxes folder with all seven years, you know, a folder for each of the seven years, and I could copy and paste into those folders. The other way to do it, of course, is to drag and drop, right? So if you drag on top of 2023, you're going to click on the file, drag it over, and let go, then the file moves over there, right? But that's the default action, right? I'm going to go Control Z and, you know, bring the file back. That's left dragging, right? If you drag with your right mouse button, you know, click down with your right mouse button and then drag over. When you let go, instead of the default action, which is highlighted here to move, you get a choice, right? You can copy the file there or create a shortcut there. Now a shortcut won't be the actual file or a copy of the actual file. It'll just jump you to the real file should you click on that shortcut. Generally speaking, you're gonna want to either copy or move right so you know because I'm trying to avoid the default action here I'm gonna choose copy right and then now if I go in there we have that admin.php file that I was copying over right so you can see you can move files by dragging and dropping or cut cutting and pasting or copying and pasting right there's a variety of ways to get to the end result but the important thing to know is that you know you can have control over your files and your folders and get yourself organized hopefully this has been a good stepping stone to lead you in that direction